For convenience purposes, this video will be shot in an island I am currently working on, and this is not a secret, so feel free to join my party anytime I'm working on it. Anyway, moving on. Grid Snap is one of the best things about this game. It allows you to create patterns, it allows you to line things up perfectly down to the pixel. However, if you're like me, you run into situations where snapping a prop or snapping a wall or snapping whatever it might be just isn't gonna work for whatever particular situation you're in. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just means that you're going to have to freehand it. Of course, freehanding things is no reason to panic, especially after you get done watching this video, because by the end of it, you will have learned five ways you can improve building without grit snap. Hey everyone, this is Syntax, and today I'm going to be going over five ways you can improve building without grid snap, or improve your freehanding for short. Hold on, there is a massive spider on my floor, and I don't feel like dying, so give me two seconds. Anyway, now that that's all taken care of, like I said in the intro, sometimes you'll be building something with grid snap, and it just doesn't quite line up how you want it to. That is not an issue though, because there are plenty of little tricks you can use to improve your ability to freehand or build without it, and these are five of them. For anyone wondering, I am in the map that I am currently building because I have freehanded so much of this. I've grid snapped some of it, but I have used so many freehanding tricks that are just super useful. Anyway, let's get into the first trick. The first and arguably most simple trick on this list is look for the clipping. Now you may be wondering what clipping I am talking about, and anytime you have a prop or a building or something to that nature, you can see that there is clipping. See it right there? Now when you first pick up a prop, it has this sort of blue glow to it, and if you move it next to a prop or a wall or just something else, you can see that it kind of changes to a light blue slash white glow. This is what you want to look for when building. Just doing this is going to improve all of your maps like a ridiculous amount. As you know, when you resize certain props, dropping things isn't always going to work, especially if the surface is uneven, so this is where you can use the looking for clipping trick. It sounds super simple because it really is. You can see that the box isn't clipping right now, so like if I look, you can see that it is clearly floating off of the ground. Yeah, that's no good. However, if I pick it up and then move it down to the point where it changes is color you can see as soon as it changes color that now means that it is level with the ground and as you can see it is level with the ground now if you get up really close to it you can even make smaller adjustments maybe even move it up slightly because you can see yeah now it's like now it's literally perfect the same logic applies to paintings if you want to get it flush up against the wall you just kind of place it wait for that color change you can see it hasn't happened yet it hasn't there it is right there then you place it and as you can see the painting is perfectly flush with the wall there are no gaps and it's not clipping too far into it either. You want to be careful because when you see this color start to change that means that the prop is actually going into the other prop and you don't want to place things like too far into the wall or into the ground or wherever it might be. You can also use this trick to help perfect your ability to tilt objects which is one of the most undervalued things in Fortnite Creative I think ever. For example if you look at this box in the bottom right I actually tilted it so it sits up against the darker box and like little stuff like this makes your maps look so good. Now if you're working with a prop like the broom from the invasion prop gallery, most of the hard work is already done for you because this is already tilted. However, if you are working with a prop that is not already tilted but you want to tilt it, you can use this clipping trick to get an exact angle at which it should sit. Anyway, for example, let's just tilt this open sign right here. Now, the first thing you probably want to do is just pull out the prop in its raw form because then you can actually tilt it the way it's supposed to be tilted. If you turn it first and then tilt it, it turns in an awkward direction. Anyway, I've decided that I want to roll this sign, so I'm going to go ahead and just pick a random angle to start so I think that will be my tilted angle now the next thing is just to simply look for the clipping I'm gonna move this to the ground you see how it changes color right there then I'm gonna place it as you can see now that we have got the prop just barely touching the ground we then want to just place it up against whatever surface is going to be leaning on and then boom you have a tilted prop now I know I am actually super picky when it comes to things leaning up against other things you can see if I put this too far into the railing it's actually clipping into the railing which is not good and this is actually the hardest part about leaning props is when you have things that start to clip into the walls or into other props you don't want that just take your time look for the clipping look for the slight discolorations, make sure it's not clipping too far into it, and that 
is the first tip on how to get better at building without grid snap. Anyway, the next tip actually has to do with moving things vertically. Now these next two tips actually have a lot to do with the angle of your camera or the angle at which it sits and not changing it while you move whatever prop you're moving. The best example I can actually think of this is when you are bordering a painting. I find myself doing this a whole lot when bordering paintings. Now for this example, we are going to use this lovely painting right here and this piece of wood from the outdoor residential prop gallery. Now I want to border this painting in this wood so I try to grid snap it onto the top and you can see that it kind of just like clips into the top of it and then if I go above it it's like awkwardly floating above the painting so I'm like okay I can just turn it upside down but then if I try to place it the top of the painting is actually clipping through the bordering and it's just a mess now this actually isn't a problem because what we can do is we can pick up our board turn off grid snap because we don't need it put your flight speed down to the lowest it will go which is 0.5 then I want to do is pick up your piece of wood make sure you're actually relatively close to it because like you don't want to pick it up and then it's like brought all the way toward you that's no good make sure you're relatively close to your painting make sure there's nothing behind you that can obscure your camera view and you are just going to very slightly tap the fly button now i actually think i went slightly above here so i'm then going to tap the shrink button and you can just kind of move back and forth with the up and down like fly up and fly down buttons and eventually you will have a lined up piece of wood now on mouse and keyboard this is a lot easier because you just have shift and space if you're going down on controller that's the same stick that actually moves your camera so you have to be very careful if you're actually going down but anyway this piece of wood didn't line up on the top so it's definitely not going to line up on the bottom so all i have to really do is just fly downward in that same path and then place it on the bottom and then we have a well bordered painting and obviously you want to do the same thing with the sides but i'm going to get to that in just a second another pretty good example of this is stacking props that are like obviously meant to be stacked if i wanted to take this box and create a copy and put it on top of itself i could just pick it up and then press my x button over and over again until it was lined up like directly lined up and then boom now obviously i could just like move this box up and place it like that if i wanted to but for much more precise actions you can move up and down vertically without changing your camera angle and it will work beautifully. Now, this next trick actually has to do with moving objects horizontally. In this map, this is a trick that I have found myself using way too often. Like, I have used it so much. Putting a border on the painting is another great example. You can see that I try to put it, but it just doesn't line up with the edge of the painting. Now, if I flip this around, it actually does line up with the edge of the painting, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna show you how to adjust things horizontally without using grid snap. Now, for this trick, you're actually gonna need a sort of stencil. Let me show you what I mean. Whatever object you're going to be moving horizontally, you want to set up a wall behind you or something solid that is parallel to the object you'll be moving it along. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if I take this floor and then create a little platform that I can actually stand on for myself, and then I rotate it so that it's kind of like this, now I have a wall that I can move along the back without changing my camera. Now, you may be thinking, why is this important? Why does this matter? This step seems kind of useless. Well, if I tried to freehand putting this thing on, here, I'm not guaranteed to walk in a parallel line to this painting. You know, I could move slightly back or I could move slightly forward. It's just not guaranteed to be parallel. However, if I set this wall against my back, it doesn't matter how far I'm pulling back on my joystick. I'm going to move parallel to the painting. So using that, we're able to pick up our piece of wood and then just kind of move it across just like this until it's in line with where it needs to be. And the same thing applies across the painting as well. If I pick it up and just move across this line, you see that it stays perfectly on the axis it's supposed to. And boom, just like that, you have a fully bordered painting. Now you have to be careful with this particular trick because if you line yourself up to the point where your camera can get obstructed or change its POV, you can see that like the piece just gets placed basically randomly. Not randomly, but it adjusts the piece to however your camera moves. So even if I do want to move this in first person, as long as I stay in first person, we should be fine. Now, even if you don't want to move across an exact horizontal plane, if you keep your camera level, it will keep the piece at that same level. Like this will never get any higher. Of course, if I then change my camera angle, you'll see that it adjusts the piece. But as long as I keep my camera here, this will stay level with whatever piece I needed to be level with. Like if I wanted to extend this road, as long as I keep my camera at this angle, I can fly around, I can do whatever. And then when I get back onto the ground, you can see that it is like perfectly flush. Like, look at the road. Where's the transition? You can't tell me. This is actually a super useful tip for building roads, because if you have a bend in your road, like I do, if you just take, like, the YAW axis, it doesn't matter how you turn it. As long as your camera stays level, 
it's gonna be flush. The last thing I can say I 100% have used it for is actually mirroring the walls that are outside onto the inside. As you can see, if I get rid of this wall here, it has a different texture on the inside. For the sake of the video, I'm actually gonna delete this wall and show you exactly what to do. Make sure grid snap is turned off and your camera is at a nice angle. Now you're gonna shrink the depth until it mirrors the texture and then you're just gonna walk back until you can actually place the wall and bada boom, bada bing, bada bang you got a wall. I used the couch here as my parallel frame of reference and I made sure my camera stayed at the same angle and then I just mirrored the wall. It's really as simple as that. So yeah, keep your camera at the same angle and line up something parallel to the thing you're moving it across and that is how you can improve your building without grid snap, moving things horizontally. Works great for bordering pieces and you know, keeping textures flush and all that great stuff. Now the fourth tip is a pretty old well-known trick. It is actually building in first person. Now there are multiple ways you can actually do this but I just like using objective devices so go ahead and pull out the objective device gallery now you want to delete all the excess until you have this piece right here and when you actually have this piece whatever props you highlight in here it allowed you to build in first person honestly i can't lie i don't even know how to properly do it but i'm pretty sure it's done with an objective device so there's videos on it I don't know exactly how to do it, but you can use those. Anyway, the last trick has to do with fine-tune adjusting. Now, let me explain what I mean. The best example I can think of is actually using these supports right here. I'm going to grid snap them, and then it doesn't quite reach the ground, so I'm going to place this one, and you can see that those textures are clipping. They're not clipping all the way around, but they are clipping in some spots, and we all know how I feel about clipping. Anyway, this is where your freehanding comes in. Now, if you just move this piece, in the slightest toward me away from me however you want to move it the clipping will no longer be there so as you can see clearly clipping right now that's an issue if i just you see that adjustment i made you see it no you didn't see it because it was so small but now the clipping is gone you can go back and watch it but i made the slightest adjustment to this column piece and the clipping was no longer there. So that's what I mean by fine tune adjustments. Or not fine tune adjustments, but micro adjustments, if that makes sense. Anyway, there you guys have it. That is five tricks that will help improve your building without grid snap. They are just beyond useful. All these buildings that you guys have seen in this video, I have used the micro adjustments. I've used the vertical trick, the horizontal trick, everything basically except for the building in first person. You tilt a prop here, you micro adjust a prop there, you use something parallel to a wall to line up a painting better. It all just makes it feel more complete. And above all, in case something doesn't line up when you want to grid snap it, you can freehand it. But anyway, that's everything I have for you guys. I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, this has been Syntax. Later.